What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started today, with our guest today, I would like to introduce our lovely co-host, uh, Leah Matthews. How you, how you doing, Leah? Hi, Chief. I'm doing good. How are you? That's awesome. Awesome. It's just me and you today, so we, we, we got it, though. Julie's out. Yeah, absolutely. So today we have a wonderful guest today that is going to bring uh, our, our viewers a ton of great information. And uh, without further ado, Leah, do you mind introducing today's guest? Absolutely, Chief. We are honored to have our guest today. He's an Army veteran who now serves our nation by taking care of those who serve through the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs as the Undersecretary for Benefits. Please help us welcome Dr. Paul Lawrence. Hey. What's going on, sir? How you doing? Mm -hmm. Great. Good morning. I'm talking to you from our the, the VBA headquarters here in Washington, D.C. Been here the entire time. So I thought, well, you know, if I'm not essential, who is? So I just want you to know we're here mm -hmm. administering benefits for our, our nation's veterans. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. Dr. Lawrence, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. We really appreciate it. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions for Dr. Lawrence, we'll be reading some of those live throughout the broadcast. And now is a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should because Chief Chats are every week. So you'll know who's coming up next. Yes. And uh, Dr. Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I can tell you when I was so I, my, my story is I, I started off in the Marine Corps, then I separated and um, I, I got out for a little bit and then I came back and joined the Air Force Reserve. But I can tell you uh, in between the, the, the point where I separated and I joined the Air Force Reserve, um, I wasn't really familiar with a lot of the VA benefits that I, that I had as a, as a veteran, as a separating veteran. Uh, I was 22 years old. I probably wasn't as locked in as I, I should have been anyway. Um, so I, I'm glad you're here to kind of uh, explain that process to to our, our service members and their families. So, because uh, there's a lot of benefits that we earn as military members that uh, a lot of folks probably aren't as aware. Uh, I think me later on in my career right now, I, I'm a lot more focused on on the benefits that I earn. But for for the 19, 20, 21 year old that's uh, contemplating separating the military, they're just really not not tuned in. You're right. In my opinion. You're right. And also the times were different. If I remember your history, that was a while ago. Well, I still yeah, think you're yes, a, it was a while ago. So we really upped our game in two ways. One of them is I don't think the transition assistance program was available when you got out the first time. Right. So that's 40 hours of training that, you know, exiting service members are required to have where they learn a lot about benefits and health care and the wide range of things they can do when they transition. So that's different, but it often is a lot. The other thing we do now, something called benefits delivery at discharge, up to starting up to six months before you leave, we can go in and help you get your benefits so that on day one as a civilian or your benefits are turned on. But you're right, you're actually worrying about one of the things we think about all the time. We'll give you a dose of information. And as you point out, America is very, very generous to its veterans, but a lot of it doesn't really sink in until you're out trying to think about it, which is why so much of what I'll talk about today is on va.gov. We have a great uh, website. In the search bar, you can just write benefits and you'll go to pages with the information. There's explanations and information as to how to apply. Awesome. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Lawrence, we have a lot of questions for you about uh, veterans benefits, but before we get to that, can you tell us about your military career? How does your time in the Army uniform uh, um, help you with your approach to your work today? Sure. I grew up in a military family. My father was a career Army officer, served for 24 years. We traveled a lot. We did the military experience, lived in Europe. I was actually born in Japan, so I really came from a military background. Both my brother and I joined the Army through ROTC. I'm the oldest of four kids, so I joined through there. And I stayed in to fulfill my commitment for three years. And I, so I think the, being in a military family, seeing how benefits and what it means to be retired as a veteran through my father's experience, as well as understanding what's required. But where it all got driven home was about three years ago. 
uh, my son, he, he was an optometrist, right? Eye doctor. He was thinking about where he would do his residency. It's a year after you've gone to school where you actually practice and get training. Um, through a long conversation, I talked to him about the history of the military in our family and what it would mean to serve through going to the VA and doing his residency at the VA Medical Center, ultimately in Hampton, Virginia. So through the discussions with him, I had a lot of time to think about what it meant to serve and what it meant to have military in our family. So when the time came to get into this position, that really uh, affected my thinking. And I vowed, sort of like I asked him to think about, when you come to a job like this, it really is important to focus on the mission and provide veterans their benefits as fast and as efficiently as possible. So it guided me a lot. And I think about my time because it was a little bit earlier than the chief's time when I exited and there was nothing. You were on your own and you had to do something. So I really want to make sure our veterans understand that VBA is really focused on, you know, administering these benefits, which they've earned. These are not entitlements, which they've earned and, and letting them know if you have questions, come to us. We will help them figure it out. Awesome. Thank you for your service. Yes. Thank you so much for your service, sir. Um, so you've talked some about your role, um, but we'd love to hear more. So what's the difference between the VA and the Veterans Benefits Administration? And then how, how do you directly help our nation's heroes? Certainly. So the VA is broken into three administrations, sort of, if you will, three parts of the work that we do. Um, everybody tends to think about the, the VHA, the Veterans uh, Health Administration. They run our hospitals. These are the largest integrated military uh, medical delivery system in the United States. Really a big wow. deal. Uh, then there's a little lesser known, the National Cemetery Administration, which deals with folks in the last part of the life. We run incredible cemeteries where veterans can be buried on very respectful. They take really good care on customer satisfaction indices. They do off the charts well. The Veterans Benefits Administration is sort of in the middle there. We're about 25,000 people. Most of us are veterans and we administer the benefits that uh, veterans have earned. And this is about the VA budget is a little south of $250 billion. Between what we administer and our size, we account for a little more than half of that. So we're sort of this unknown entity that you know everybody touches when they first exit. And the benefits range from what's called disability compensation. I've been hurt in service and then you know, it affects my ability to earn a living. It uh, includes pension. Uh, if you serve in certain circumstances and you fall on hard times, there is a pension available. It includes life insurance for, for veterans. Uh, we actually run the 14th largest portfolio of life insurance in the United States. And this is something that started in 1918 after World War I for our veterans. So we do that. Education, the famous GI Bill, right, which goes back to the famous law shortly around the time World War II engine. And then what's called the loan guarantee, which is the important thing for our veterans to really appreciate, which is the ability to buy a home with no money down. This accelerates your ability to move into a community, build wealth through your home, and move much faster than your friends who are not veterans who have to save and, and raise, uh, raise the down payment. So this is a powerful benefit. Something called vocational, what used to be called vocational rehabilitation. Now we call it veterans readiness and employment. If you have a service disability, you can get additional counseling and training. So I'm sure there's others I've forgotten, but uh, they're all very powerful benefits available to our veterans. We service about 6 million veterans every month. They get something from us. And again, it's all this information is on va.gov and we're here to help veterans get their benefits. That's, that's awesome. Uh, and I wanna thank you and your team because um, I just recently used one of my benefits, uh, the VA home loan. Um, I've, I've used it about three times. And, and so as long as I keep paying, paying off mortgages and I'll be able to use it again on another house that I, I'm, I'm a, a resident in. So that's been awesome. Well, great. That's really good to hear. And let me just build on that, Chief, because that's really, really important. You can use it multiple times. Okay. It's really good to use. It's very, very important. And quite now, quite frankly, right now, we're seeing a record use of this benefit with low uh, interest rates. It's a fantastic time to refinance, and take some money, you know, have a lower payment and even have more available to during this period of time. So we encourage everybody, again, to look at our website. There's a number there folks can call and our team will help them do that. Awesome. Awesome. So it's been a really hard year with uh, COVID-19. Uh, that's just been the common theme for, for everyone. Um, have your physical locations been open during the pandemic? or And what do your online resources look like for veterans? 
Sure. No, we started closing down mid-March when most of the country closed down. And then finally, we had to send everybody home for safety for everything you kind of, we all understand. But we were very fortunate. Well, before I got here, folks invested in telework. So we are telework enabled for our whole team. Probably at one point, 99% of our team could telework so we could process benefits and help folks. But one of the things we did in each, in our, each of our offices, we have 56 offices around the country, United States, um, some overseas, but they're much smaller. Um, we could have veterans come in what we call public contact center, come in, we could help you in person. That stopped, we've had to switch that to online, over the phone or uh, through the internet. So we really shifted that way, but our processing is kept up and except, ex with the exception of some constraints, we couldn't do what are called CNP exams. These are in-person exams. You have a condition and we need to go validate it. We would meet with you, a medical professional would meet with you. We had to stop that. So those just started reopening. So by and large, you can get us on the web and I'll share this number for your CONUS viewers. You can always call us and discuss your benefits at 1-800-827-1000. That's answered by VBA employees. It's really a very good line. I checked last night, we got about 22,000 phone calls. More than 95% were answered in one minute. So you're always welcome to call us and learn more about how we're here to help. That's awesome. excellent. And that number and also the website, those are in the comments if you guys are just watching. Thank you. Yeah, I had a friend uh, at my previous base. Uh, he, he was going through a medical evaluation board and he had to do the VA piece of it. And he, he was telling me about the delays in, in medical care because they couldn't do the exams because of COVID obviously. Uh, but he was able to to um, to work with your team and, and, and get as soon as you guys were back up and running, he was able to get in. And so uh, he had a very, very success. Uh, success. He, he felt really good about the process, even through the pandemic. So uh, kudos to you and your team. Well, we're trying to make what you just described, that experience, not be a surprise. So folks will come to us and understand that's how it's supposed to go. I know five-ish years ago, that wasn't the case, you know. You waited in line to make appointments to our hospital. Your claims took years to get done. That's not how it is anymore. What you described is much more what's going on. So for your viewers who are unfamiliar with VA, what you just said, Chief, is how it is. For folks who could have been frustrated before, we'd ask them to come back and give us a second chance to make things right because it is a very different place than back in the day. Yes, sir. Awesome. Dr. Lawrence, let's talk about service members transi transitioning to civilian life. I imagine that this is critical support, especially, you know, during this uncertain time for our country right now. So can you just run down what resources are available to help service members as they leave the military? Sure. Well, first, you'll start by going to TAP, as I said, the Transition Assistance Program, and they will describe your benefits and things like that. There's a host of resources, uh, not only available from VA, but elsewhere from nonprofits who will help with resumes and job search and the like. And the one thing I would tell our veterans that, you know, even though the country's, you know, reaccelerating economically, it is still a great time to look for a job as a veteran, okay, or as a new service member. And companies, good companies want veterans to come to work for them. So it's simply, in many ways, understanding where, what you'd like to do and finding the company. So I'm not gonna minimize that. We don't really have the charge to do employment. That's the Department of Labor, but we work closely with veterans. But I will tell you something new we started to help veterans in transition. It's called Solid Start. This is a program we started late last year at the direction of the president from an executive order he signed a couple of years before that has us calling veterans, new veterans three times in their first year once after 90 days, once about the mid-year, and once towards the end of the first year. And what we do when we get them on the phone is we answer their questions. We don't talk to them. We answer their questions or talk at them. And so this is good because veterans get to ask questions about some of the things Chief alluded to. I didn't pay attention in the benefits briefing. Help me. I don't understand how I get health care. Help me. And then we follow up with um, emails with more resources to help them with their specific situation. So we'd ask folks who are out, if you haven't heard from us after 90 days, we might not have your information. Call that 1-800-827-1000 number, give us your information. If you do get a call from us, please take the phone call. We're here to help and connect them with 
VA. And if you think about it, it's really your invitation to come join us, right? So we're trying hard to make our veterans feel connected. You were once connected in the military. You're part of the what I call the world's greatest team, the US military. But now once you leave, we invite you to join the strongest community in the world, US veterans. And this is our invitation to you. So we really want veterans to know you can be connected. VA is here to help. Yeah, that's awesome. Because um, like, like you said, when I when I got out a, a, a little while ago, uh, we, I did not have that. And so I went, I basically was kind of drawn unemployment and I went to a, a temp service that was trying to find me temporary jobs here and there. Well, it wasn't that great. And so uh, I, I, I'm kind of glad it went that way because if you guys would have put me in a great position, I probably wouldn't come back in the military. But um, it, this kind, but just having that program for for veterans is is, is amazing, and, and the evolution of the the your section specifically uh, has has had so many success stories. It's, it's ridiculous. So thank you all for that. So uh, early this year, the uh, Army and Air Force Exchange Service was honored to provide a new benefit to veterans. And all veterans with service-connected dis disabilities were welcomed back to their exchange with in-store shopping privileges. In your view, how has that benefit been received by the veteran community? Uh, really well. This is a great benefit, and given, given my experience with the exchanges, it's a powerful benefit that saves you money and the like. So I will tell you, what our secretary, Secretary Wilkie, has felt very strongly about is service ought to matter. So something he did about a year and a half ago was say, look, if you see, received a Purple Heart, we will, we will expedite the process of, of your claim, recognizing the special nature of your service. This continues that same thing, right? That if you are service connected, you get special privileges like access to the exchanges, and we all know how good they are wide range of merchandise and service, low cost, and of course, no, uh, no taxes, no state taxes charge on your purchase. And plus, it's a really good thing to feel good about, right? Because while you don't make profits, I understand you call them earnings, that's reinvested in morale and welfare for our service members. So it's a win-win. You'll feel good doing it, you'll get a great bargain, and it's a special benefit for your veteran status. So I think this is just great. And when I do tell town halls. When I used to go out in person, veterans would talk about this and be appreciative of it. Uh, well, sir, man, you just you just went down. Your, your official <laughs> AFI's uh, associate. Thank <laughs> you for that plug. We appreciate that. Well, and I, I even want to go further. I want your help because we're very concerned about veterans who receive their benefits outside the banking system. So let me describe. They get it in a check or they get it in a prepaid debit card. We're trying to convince them to get their uh, benefits in a bank or a credit union. So we started something called the Veterans Benefits Banking Program last year and arranged with 33 banks and credit unions to offer no cost accounts to our veterans who get their benefits through that account. And as you know, it's better to be banked, right? It's safer. There's less fees. There's, you know, just people worrying about the security of information. And while they're there building credit, they might get a credit card, which they can use and spend at A fees, okay? Yes. So it's really, really important. All joking aside, it's really important that we protect our veterans' benefits from fraud, from you know bad actors and the like. And one of the consequences will be they will build their credit score and again, be able to use you know, A fees more efficiently. Absolutely. And like you say, our dollars get reinvested into our military. So um, that, that, that's, that's the key there. Yes, sir. Dr. Lawrence, want to take a moment to pause and just look at viewer feedback from the live stream. Um, Ford says, <clears throat> TAPS helped me a ton. Um, Ron says, I retired in 95. I seriously have no idea what I should do. I have TRICARE and that is about it. So Ford, I mean, Ron, I'm sorry. We um, probably the phone number may be best for you. Is that sure, what me, you would let recommend? Let jump in. Uh, Leah, let me just jump in because that's a good sure. question. Yes. Um, I started with the uh, pandemic being unable to travel, as we talked about a second ago, but I started doing teletown halls where veterans can call a toll-free number and talk to me about issues and ask me questions. And one of the questions that comes up is very similar to what Ron said. I served back in the day. I got out. I did not know. So we asked them to connect with us just like you described, 1-800-827-1000, va.gov. But also, and this is important, 
each state has a department of veterans affairs or an equivalent. Okay. So for example, if you're in Texas, it's called the Texas veterans commission. They have service officers there who will also help veterans, especially like Ron connect with their benefits. So if you'd rather, <clears throat> excuse me, deal with somebody directly, you can work through your state to get that information too. Excellent. Thank you. We have one more from Juan who says, good morning. I need to have my military ID. I did active and reserve, but never got a pink ID card. So I can't get benefits. I guess I can call this number. I need and want to get some extra training or finish my AP license. Right. Um, so what we really need is your DD-214. Okay, which shows that you are a veteran, explains your status as a veteran. So I think that's what he mean by his pink ID card on retired and the like. But yes, I would definitely ask him to get in contact with us. There's a couple programs that might be particularly relevant, the GI Bill or Veterans Readiness and Employment. Again, there's information about that on the web, but I'd ask uh, uh, Juan to contact us or a state um, DVA to help us, um, you know, connect you to VA. Excellent. And then others are just um, letting us know where they're watching from all over the world. And Ron said, thanks. I need that. Great. Great. Uh, thank you for helping, up, helping our viewers, uh, Dr. Lawrence. And uh, also, uh, before we, before we uh, end the interview, uh, work, can you want to give a, another plug for your, uh, your, your uh, website and also social media? Are you guys on social media? Sure, we are. So let's do let's do the website va.gov. Okay, you can always call us at 1-800-827-1000. And we're all over social media. If you go to your favorite social media and search veterans benefits or VBA, you will eventually come to our pages. And I'll have our guys send you all the official links you can put in your website. And if you're interested in following me, I'm on LinkedIn is my name, Paul Lawrence, and I try to post important things and updates about the VBA. And then on Friday, I do a LinkedIn live session. It wouldn't rival what you're doing, Chief, but it's <laughs> VBA, what I call news you can use, a lot of answering questions that I hear from the Teletown Halls. And again, for folks who are unable to join the Teletown Halls, if they go to va.gov and type Teletown Halls, you'll see the schedule and you'll also see the files from the previous Teletown Halls. So I know when I was overseas, we lived in Belgium. And we also lived in Germany. You're anxious to have access to information about your state. You can find the Teletown Hall I did with your state and listen in and see what the veterans are asking about and also the connected, the connected information for the state, their phone numbers and websites and the like. That's, that's awesome. And Dr. Lawrence, you provided so much like valuable information. Uh, like I said, I, I was perusing your, your, your website today and to see all the, the benefits and all the different programs that you have under your AOR is, is it's awesome. And so, like I said, uh, I wish I would have had that uh, when I was separating, but man, it's out there and veterans and service members and families, please, please use that website. Um, we, we appreciate your time, uh, taking some time to chat with us. Uh, I'm definitely gonna try to check out some of your virtual town halls and, and uh, kind of get smart on that because I'm about to transition well, I won't say I'm at the latter end of my career uh, and I'll be transitioning into retired life at some point in the in the near future. But um, there's a lot of great information. Uh, it's truly an honor for you to, to have us with you today. Uh, this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines and Coasties. Uh, we wish you all the best and thank you for taking care of our veterans. Yeah, well, thank you, Chief. And just to kind of close out, I mean, what you're doing about talking about your own career is good. You should start early in the transition process. So it's never too early to do that. Certainly, you want to make decisions about your life going forward and how VA fits in that. And finally, I'd ask again for your viewers to really think hard about what I said. It is a very different VA than just three or four years ago. Our health care is better, the timeliness of our getting benefits. So please come to VA. And like I said, if you had a bad experience, we're not that way anymore. We'd ask for a second chance to make things right. So thank you for what you do. Thank you, Leah, for doing this. Really appreciate you helping me get the word out to our veterans and service members' families. Awesome. And if you could uh, yes, hang, hang back uh, for a second, sir, uh, after the live is over with, I got to get you some information from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.